So yeah, with the screen being a bit blue, um, you can't really see our um, image there too well. So we'll see how we, we go along. Um, what the poster for our project is just over there. So you will see it is lots of folded arms um, on that list. One, two, three, four. Um, so yeah, Anna was the wonder. Um, I will say Lou Mycroft, who I think is down on the program, it was also the um, the project. Uh, manager, but she can't be with us here today, which is why you've got Tom and myself. Um, but what FAB actually stands for, as you may just have gathered, is um, the Folded Arms Brigade. Okay, and where that came from is um, last year, and another um, ETF funded project um, regarding reflection, we observed um, literally the Folded Arm Brigade, at least when it came to um, using tech educators who were somewhat resistant to using tech. Um, in their practice. We wanted to research and explore that resistance, um, why it's there, what we can do to support those who are digitally res resistant. Um, and when we say digitally resistant, we mean those who, when, it, when they think of tech, it's, you know, it can get feelings of impostorship, feeling like they, do, they, do, they don't belong there, um, there's that dread, just that panic of having to use tech. Okay. So, what we did, well, we've asked them to move it on, which is this one, is um, we interviewed seven um, volunteers. Um, and there were volunteers who really recognised that they had this resistance, they had these feelings when it came to using tech, and they wanted to move forward with it. And so that together we could explore this resistance. So we interviewed these volunteers in a thinking environment. Unfortunately, there's not enough time for you to explain more about what a thinking environment is, but if you would like to know more, there is a link on the bottom of the PowerPoint, um, and I'm sure these PowerPoints will be going out from what Claire told me, um, so you can follow it there, but it's at the Teach Northern WordPress. And what we did, we asked, when we were interviewing the respondents, we just asked them one question, and that's the question, what are you assuming that is stopping you becoming more confident with tech? And then we shut up and we just listened to them and we listened for around 15 minutes which is quite a long period of time and we just let them talk and we hoped that through using this methodology that we would uncover some of the assumptions that they were making that were limiting their thinking and their thoughts around using tech and that is exactly what we did find. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to do the presentation a little bit differently is because when we were planning this, we were struggling to find a way to put everything across. Or, because there, was lots of, there were themes that emerged, some to do with the resistance, about why people are resistant, some to do with um, supporting digital resilience, by, what, by which we mean, how come those individuals, by learning to do one thing digitally, can in, they can feel they're more confident at learning to do another thing, develop their resilience. Um, so what we're going to do is Tom and I are actually going to do like a thinking environment application which is called Dialogue and we're just going to have a dialogue with each other while the slides play, we've got them on a loop, the rest of them, um, just talking to each other about what we feel we have learnt about the project. Um, and how long have, how long have we been going? Really right, so I'll set the timer for 10 minutes, okay? So then we know. Is that okay? So I shall just set that timer off. So Tom, would you like to start? So what would you like to say about what we've learned about the project? Um, we've learned so much about it actually. Uh, and myself, um, I think the primary thing that I've learned um, being an ICT, mainly an ICT teacher, is um, a recognition that uh, ICT teaching in the Northern College, lots of places that I've been to as well, um, seems to be um, somewhat lacking uh, in that uh, people are um, uh, sort of slipping through through the net um, and um, basically, as that shows there, the first principles of IT uh, are not really being addressed. Um, and people are sort of going through the programmes ter terrified. So the uh, first, first principles, lack of um, people coming onto these courses, uh, not feeling particularly confident, feeling as if they're not being listened to, 
I think what for me is that people thought maybe the first principle was that it, what came across as the assumption that you needed to know it all, just that you needed to know how everything works inside out to be able to use something to do with tech. And it's what you said to me, to, 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 said about some of the students, Tom, when you said you don't have to know everything, you don't have to know it at all. That was so a, that's, a really, that's a really important thing that I was overlooking there for a, for a moment. Is, um, so, so many of the people that we, we teach do have this assumption that um, to do the thing that they, they need to do, uh, they need to be complete uh, masters, they need to know all of the IT inside out before they can go into a room and feel confident to be with other people. Whereas, um, and I, you know, I can look at the IT department at the Northern College and see that there, there are huge gaps there. You know, there are courses to teach people, you know, the upper end of things like Adobe Photoshop, um, Excel, how to do pivot tables, um, all sorts of uh, things like that. You see, we have the tech difficulties as well, and I think that's what it's about. It's what happened there, it's that fear of that happening when they're up there. It's what is really holding a lot of people back, and it's just allowing them, giving them permission to say, actually, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Um, with with that with that mastery thing, I mean, you know, I, I used to be guilty of, of you know sort of teaching people how to do these things. But it's basically learning how to do these, how to use these programs but not really have a purpose in mind or a goal. Whereas increasingly now I've come to the conclusion that actually you only need to know bits and pieces enough to solve the problem. You know, enough to sort of give you, um, uh, you know, a sort of report at the end of it or be able to engage with the blended part of a course. Just to know those bits and pieces, you don't have to know Excel inside out. Um, so basically, it's supplying, it's through, the, through support, um, offering people um, enough for them to be able to develop their confidence um, to become resilient. And what we mean by resilience is probably what I've just demonstrated there in a lot of situations, in IT situations, teaching, where you might feel a little bit nervous, for example. Like now, a lot of people, when presented with something like that, with that suddenly timing out and freezing, and then going out of actual slideshow mode, might have panicked. And it's about developing that little bit of confidence that stops you from panicking, and then just try to actually solve solve the problem. Many of the um, the sort of participants, there was a, a strong theme that came through about assumptions. The, the most strongest theme was to do with imposter syndrome. Um, I don't know those who've heard it by which it means it's just feeling that you shouldn't be there, you're going to be found out. You know, you're not really worthy of being in this, this position. Um, and, it, and it came through really strongly in lots of um, different ways. Um, but I do think that that is one, see, it's gone again, it's how we've set this up, isn't it? Um, but I think that when, what a lot of the, they were saying what they needed was, was that fluency, by which we mean they need to feel that they've got those first principles, they've got the basics, and then they've got time to practice it. And it was that, that time to practice it and make it useful for themselves and for the students, so then they don't feel like an imposter anymore. So that they feel valued that they're worth, worth doing something. And I think the thing that struck me most about this project is just how simple what simple the results were about what needs what's needed is just going back to basics and keeping it people first and thinking about what do you need the tech to be used for. But there is, you know, there's no point learning how to do something if you don't need it or if it's not going to benefit your students. That's probably that's probably been um, 
you know, as an ICT teacher, that's probably been the biggest lesson for me, is revealing that most of actually what has been taught hasn't been of any real use. Uh, people will learn to do something, um, people will be in a class, do something for a while, and then not really be able to apply it to, you know, the problem that they want to, to solve. So, um, the simplicity of this, of all of this research, to reveal that actually there's a gap there in the teaching, and that that needs to be addressed. Um, the actual things that are being taught, uh, and the, uh, the the level of support that's missing, but also the building up of the confidence, that that sort of hand holding, is perhaps the biggest lesson, really. Yeah, and I'm thinking back. I remember um, we had our conference at Northern College on Friday, and at the end of it, one of my students, who's a, a level three student, who has a background in IT, but is really struggling. I'm asking that we, we teach we teacher educators, I should have said that, they're all on teacher education programmes, and she has to do a, a teach for me um, in a couple of weeks, and she wants to use PowerPoint, and she's absolutely petrified of it, to the extent that she's booked herself on a three-day PowerPoint course. Um, and you just said to her, Tom, you don't need to do that. Let me show you, I can show you in 10 minutes. And I suddenly became aware when I saw what was going on at the end of the conference, when Tom's there showing her, spending 10 minutes with her, showing her the basics of PowerPoint, all that she needs to know to be able to put a simple presentation together. That there she was, my student. She was somebody who her big assumption was that she needed to know the ins and outs and the workings of it. So I think what it's helped me is it's helped me to identify those students I'm working with, who are you know educator students, um, to be able to identify what their needs regarding IT may be and how to support them to develop their own digital resilience. I think it's given me an awareness of that, um, and to know that I've just got to say to them, it's, it's okay, you don't need to know it all, and to be honest with them about my own limitations with tech as well, because I'm no expert by any stretch of the imagination. Obviously a lot more research can, can sort of yeah. come out of this, but um, that little example there is is so revealing and so important. And I just sometimes wonder whether um, people feel that they need to have that mastery of something um, to avoid a sense of shame or, or, or feeling embarrassed about something, rather than going to a room with an open mind and say, I'm now, I don't know anything about this, I'm going to learn how to do it. People feel often that they have to know something inside out before they can engage with it and start to be creative. And I suppose really, for me, the massive thing I, I learned is linked to um, Ken Robinson's book called The Elements, mm -hmm. and ultimately it's not about learning things inside out, it's about bits and pieces, using bits and pieces to be creative, you know, and he sees creativity as, um, you know, one of the missing functional skills, and that's what I'm steering towards, but I'm moving away from, used to be a business analyst, moving away from being a business analyst and being really techie, to getting the bits and pieces that are required to get that end result and forgetting about all the mastery of it. That's our 10 minutes, I'm assuming that's our, yeah, our time up. Yes, so, yeah. so, time for some questions. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, um, uh, on your slideshow, um, you mentioned, uh, uh, was it rhizomatic um, yeah. programs to support? What, what did you mean by that? It's, um, yeah, it's rhizomatic by what you mean, it's like the um, underground stuff, the stuff that goes on, like the uncourse, that while you're teaching, it's the other stuff that goes on when you do, you're doing things. Um, so what we're talking about, I'm just going to check the slide to make sure I am saying the right thing. Yeah, the rhizomatic, so when we're on our teacher ed programmes, when we're delivering them, to have other courses running alongside them to support um, digital resilience, um, or actually just that awareness when we're in class or when we're online, we do a blended learning approach um, so that we can we can use Yammer, we use Yammer as a platform of communicating with students, um, that we can use that platform 
sort of to, to create those rhizomatic learning opportunities for showing people the basics, you know, be it's it almost, it's, almost like it's, and, it's not actually part of the sort of developed curriculum, it's a curriculum created by the learners as, and the learners as needed um, yeah. as, as time progresses. So if, it, so if it becomes apparent that people need support or they need to learn a particular thing, basically pop-up courses will appear to support that sort of thing. So it could be with social media, you know, internet safety, these things, yeah. anything but to be led by the students. Okay. Um, do you teach uh, functional ICT? There's a lot of stuff you're talking about, but quite often with IT it can be seen as an isolated subject, whereas if you're going down the more functional side, when you say the, the, the use of the, the technology, you can pick and choose elements and, and adapt it to show that I, I'm just into I know PowerPoint is a school and it's a presentation, but then I'm going to move on to Excel because I need to show my figures. It gives you that more flexibility to bring in more a, a, an idea that this is useful in my own. Yes, yeah, so, so we don't teach IT ourselves, we've got an IT department at Northern College who teach these those sorts of the functional skills tech courses. Um, but it's interesting your point, what you're saying, because what we found from a lot of the respondents were they could be quite expert on Facebook and other social media, but don't recognise that as an IT skill in itself. They weren't making the, the connection. So it was about, you say, the, the usefulness. And actually, the majority of our students don't need to use Excel. They might need to, you know, maybe look at a spreadsheet, but that would be it. But they're panicking. There was one respondent, if you remember Tom, who absolutely was a real barrier for her was that she didn't know how to use Excel. Um, so it's, it's, I suppose it's about encouraging the students to just learn what they need to learn. Thank you. And I think we're going to move on to our next speaker. But thank you very much for having me, I think.